Welcome to Breaking Beauty Podcast, Cassandra. Um, I just want to tell you, first of all, we're here in Los Angeles yeah. recording live, and it's so nice to meet you. And it's you look so nice great, and your too. skin's Thank amazing. You. So, yeah. is, so Thank is your you hair. Very much. And you guys were so kind, the folks at Kitsch, to drop off a package in our room. And it was honestly like Christmas. And I can't remember what I used so many products out of that box this morning. I just want to say thank you. <laughs> yeah. officially. Well, thank you. Because <laughs> we take so much pride in the products that we make. And yeah. so like hearing anybody compliment them or say it's their favorite, their favorite, that sentence yes. is my goal. Oh, it's my favorite scrunchie or it's my yes. favorite eye mask so it's just such an honor so thank you thank yeah. you yeah <laughs> so we want to help paint a little picture of who you are if our listeners aren't familiar with you so i understand that you've had a lot of jobs and created more than a few startups before kitsch so what was your most humbling job ever <sighs> that's a it's and i don't mean to pollyanna this at no. all <laughs> but I didn't ever really like dislike a job. Like there were always like I always made it fun. Uh-huh. Um it's interesting because I think I started Kitch when I was really young. So yeah. um before 25, then, right? Yeah, I was 25. That's incredible. So only a year ago. Right. Yeah. Just kidding. Exactly. <laughs> Honestly, it looks um, like it. Yeah. But, but no, I I mean, I did everything from, you know, babysitting to waitressing to, mm-hmm. yeah, I did people's makeup and I, did, I bought a spray tan machine. Like I did all of the, I managed a cupcake shop so that I could, t- and it was like a 5 a.m. job so then I could have another job mm-hmm. in the afternoon. So, um, but I really, I took something, I, I talk about it, it's like very slumdog millionaire. I took something from all those jobs right. and I found something great about each one. So it was never really like, terrible for me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But I think where I never really excelled, like there there's there's these these things that you recognize about yourself <laughs> that you're like, okay, maybe I'm not the best at this is like um self-promoting. Like, yeah. you know, I always like led with the, whatever was in front of me, like product first. Like the food was right. always like it was always about the food or it's always about like the because and I realized like it's a much easier way to connect with people. And so, you know, I, I don't know. I'm not like a forward facing founder. <laughs> right. So I, I just something I realized uh, mm-hmm. about myself recently that like, oh, I've kind of always helped, you know, hid behind, behind yeah. the, the, the product that was right. in front of me. So, yeah. right. Yeah. I get that. I get that. But was there ever a moment where you were like on the 405 with your spray tan machine in the back and you're going, what? <laughs> I, I have a flat tire. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, I think that's, a, I, I have, I had lots of those. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, when I did door to door sales, Okay. That was okay. that was now probably that was probably the most um that was probably the hardest because you know when when you work at like a flea market which I've done mm-hmm. um when you work at trade shows which I've done people are there to buy. Yes. Like you were in a mutual agreement. I'm here to sell, you're here to buy, but when when you do um door to door sales, they're not they're they're there to like run their business yeah and you're an intruder (laughs) you're an intruder in their space and so you like go in and 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 you're trying to initiate something that they they actually don't want any part in it right and they're not in that mindset so this is like b2b sales yeah yeah yeah. and i'm like going into a boutique and i'm like trying to you know hustle with these products that they didn't they had i didn't have an appointment or anything Mm -hmm. so um so that 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 could be you know those experiences humbling that's pretty humbling um did you ever find a formula of like the opening line that would get them to listen to you I led with my product and so before I even came in I I would like have the products like mm-hmm. I had my suitcase and I had the products like mm-hmm. out in my hand were these the elastics these, these, were, the these elastics. were the original kitsch elastics yeah. which I yeah. still remember they were elastic and they were hand tied no. on mm-hmm. one mm-hmm. side yep and then I took a, a lighter and singed the end for each and every oh, wow. one of them um but but I would have the products out, okay. like almost like leather jacket open, you know, <laughs> with my watches. But like I'd have the product in my hand. So then I'd be like, and, and it, before I could even say something, they'd be like, oh, that's cute. Mm-hmm. Okay. And so it was, it kind of was this like, oh, you think it's cute? Well, guess what? I'm selling it. Right. So, you know, 
but sometimes it didn't go that way. The cold opener. <laughs> and, and a lot of times I get a parking ticket. And mm. so like even if I sold you know, $20 worth of elastic, my parking ticket would be 50 right. And so then it would just go home crying. Yeah. <laughs> so. yeah. Honestly, I do think that there's something to be said for learning how to cold call. Yeah. It was something that I had. I think my first job ever was selling Shriners tickets on the phone, telemarketing. I was calling people during the dinner hour. Oh. And I literally couldn't go to the bathroom at this call center until I sold a certain amount. And it was, it taught me a lot. And even when I went to mm-hmm. work at magazines, one of the jobs they put me on was selling classified ads. And so I had to cold call people out of the blue. They had mm-hmm. no idea who I was. But I feel like it forces you out of your comfort zone. Yeah. Get and comfortable with it's really, rejection. it's almost like, um, what do they call it? When you keep doing something over and over and mm-hmm. then it become you become desensitized mm-hmm. to yeah. it mm-hmm. and you lose the fear. Right. Mm-hmm. It's it's powerful. I recommend everybody door to door at yeah. some point in their life. That call center sounds awful. <laughs> like not well, going maybe, to the maybe not that, but I don't uh, know if that would be legal. Something anymore. I don't know what the equivalent would be in twenty twenty four, but right. something, mm-hmm. you know, slide into someone's DMs. Take right. a risk. Right. Yeah. What was the impetus for starting it in twenty ten? I don't know if I know that part of your story. Yeah. Um, um, I always knew I wanted to be an entrepreneur. Okay. Like forever. Um, and even when I was young, I asked my parents to, my stepdad was an orthodontist and I was like, can I make retainers for you? Like I, oh I was gosh. always very hungry to mm-hmm. work and, and create products. I really just like me. I, I genuinely like service. Mm-hmm. It's so fun for me to like listen to people's wants and, and then be able to deliver it. Um, but in 2010, um, so again, I had worked all these jobs and was saving up. And in 2010, at the ripe age of 25, I was like, I know everything there is to know. I need to start mm-hmm. another business. <laughs> um, and I just I just did the one thing that I knew how to do, which was craft something and start selling it. And okay. Yeah, my my mom and I had a jewelry business before. Okay. And uh, even though, you know, I didn't have an MBA or I didn't write a business plan or anything, I, there was just one thing I knew how to do. It was make a product and, and sell it. And get it in front of people. Yeah. Yeah. It's never once that I think like, okay, where is this going in, right. in, in 14 years from right. now? Like I never sat down and, and had that strategic plan. It was like make the product, sell it, and just go day by day. But um But what's really interesting, as I was growing the business, I started to look and see, okay, um, nobody's really doing this. Mm -hmm. And there's kind of two players that own this space and they're billion dollar companies. Mm -hmm. Like, can I really do this? Can I really be the one that maybe knocks on Ulta's door Mm -hmm. or Target's door and like, you know, could I do this? And I'm going to tell you right now, it is very hard. Mm -hmm. They have it locked down pretty tight, but we just, I mean, we have a pretty substantial space in Ulta, which they're the most incredible partner, but, um, but we just got into Target. And so it's really exciting to see uh, a brand like ours, that's woman certified woman owned and and able to like, you know, Mm -hmm. kind of enter in this Mm -hmm. space that, um, that, you know, in, in in the beauty industry, they're already talking about that, you know, being able to bring in like female founded brands and all these things. But mm-hmm. but this space didn't really get that love. And so mm-hmm. it's it's uh, the best team that's helping me to do that. So, mm-hmm. yeah. What does women do women owned mm-hmm. certified mean? Oh, my gosh. That is such a great question mm. because it is actually very hard to get certified as a woman-owned and minority-owned business. You have to, to apply for it. Mm-hmm. There's a whole legal counsel, and you have to get approved for it. So woman-owned means that you have to have over 51% ownership of the company. You have to prove that you're the ultimate decision maker. Mm-hmm. So it, signing the checks and, and hiring, firing, like all, all mm-hmm. of these things. And then um, and then that you have no limitations to the decisions that you make at the company. And so that's woman owned certified. So uh, tricky because, you know, if someone gets investor outside investors um, and, you know, they still run the day to day, if it becomes over 51 percent, they're no longer can get the certification. Mm -hmm. Same with minority owned, too. I'm Colombian. Um, My whole paternal side of the family still lives in Colombia. So. Um, same with uh, minority owned certification, which we also have too. So, um, but yeah, it's uh, 
in and I think that those are the types of things that um, can be really celebrated because you can have a woman CEO, which is amazing, mm-hmm. um, but to to get to the place where it's a larger company and woman owned certified, um, it's actually really, really difficult. Yeah, that's actually been a topic of conversation Mm -hmm. lately is how many female founders there have been, but then they get to a certain point and then they kind of hire like a male starts running at the top and they sort of turn into not a consultant, but yeah, they take on a smaller role. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's hard. It's 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 so hard, especially like if you have a family. Mm hmm. Um, I mean, it's hard without a family, yeah. you know, um, but uh, it, it is it, it's really it's it's a challenge. And um, anybody that is going through that, um, send me a message on Instagram. We right. can Ooh. we can uh, we can have a chat together about it. I love the whole behind the scenes women supporting women in the in the entrepreneurial space, especially in beauty. It, mm-hmm. It's so I hear it from so many founders we've had on the mic and it's honestly inspiring. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But back to your beauty routine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. What are some of your favorite products from from Kitsch? And do you have any hacks for how you like to use them? I love our Kitsch spa headband. The spa headband where it okay. just pulls all your hair up. And then I think we sent you this flexi shower mm-hmm. cap, yes. too. Yes. Like used that. it this morning. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, that product is incredible. And truly our shampoo and conditioner is amazing right um i think that that is one of those products where i'm like dang we made a really really good product and um and we just keep getting better and better at it and we have a couple new items coming out soon too that i think are going to be i don't know home runs as well when are are they coming out we have a slick stick and a dry shampoo and they'll be coming out in the next month and a half okay so um, those are two to look out for. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. And this shampoo and conditioner, everyone, they are solid. They are bar mm-hmm. shampoo and conditioner. And yeah. that's a choice. That's Cassandra. a choice. Cassandra. <laughs> I feel like it's not easy to do. Yeah. And there's a big barrier. Like, let's just be real. People yeah. don't really want to get into it. They don't, I, I don't even have a soap dish holder in so, my yes. shower. Like yeah. in my condo that I live in. I have a so. Victorian tub. So, I mean, <laughs> it's going to be a challenge getting yeah. me to figure out where to put it i well as you can see we have lots of <laughs> options we have yes. a buffet yes. of uh vessels for you yes to there's entertain. a shower caddy there's um, a mesh bag but here's what's really interesting and um and you know i think one of the reasons that we were so passionate about this product we did not have to compromise on the quality mm-hmm. when making it into a bar so 90 percent of the products in the big bottles are water yes mm-hmm. And you have to put preservatives in there in order to ensure mm-hmm. that it doesn't go um, bad on the countertop and heat and and all of that in your shower. Um, and so we were able, like, I'll give you an example, uh, a, a mask, a hair mask or a conditioner might only be about 4% of like those really like hydrating butters that you want to really make that nice slip in your hair. Our bar has 12, 12%. Mm. And you can't really do that unless you start like just straight up putting oil, um, you know, in your shower and start right. pumping it that way. Um, so it's really effective. And um, once people use it, they're kind of like, okay, it took me a minute to like get over the bar thing. Yes. Um, even my mom, <laughs> she was like, I just can't. And now yeah. she's like a full convert. Really? Okay. I feel like if I can get my mom to yeah, convert yes. my sister too like they were both kind of like we love you but bars <laughs> yes. like you know like no, i don't know why yeah. that's my mm-hmm. starting thought to yeah. be honest yeah, yeah. you'll be shocked we were number one on amazon for shampoo mm-hmm. over olaplex that's crazy like, we were like this is a legit hair product yeah <laughs> wow like, and and you know it's crazy because you know it is foreign it is different mm-hmm. it's a behavior change but I don't know if you remember, but like, remember when we started buying bottled water? Right. Yes. And it was just like, this is weird. I'm buying water. Like, yeah. how, that's how strange. And I, I really feel like it will come to this with beauty, too, mm-hmm. where, mm-hmm. you know, and another thing, too, that I feel like is such a benefit for our bars is most of the bottles that you 
buy they're expensive right mm-hmm. just for a, a inexpensive bottle you're spending a dollar fifty two dollars on the cost of good right mm-hmm. um as that would translate like maybe it would add you know quite a bit to the retail cost too when you can take that out mm-hmm. and you take it and you make it this big and, yeah. and not heavy to ship it saves so much money on the on the um brand side right that we can put more into the actual product yeah. so i do love that it's yeah. pretty great. Okay. <laughs> I know, but is that your number one seller now, or what is your number? Is it the viral he- um, the cur- heatless the cur- curler, or what is it? What's the number one? It's a good question. So, because we are are such an omni-channel brand, meaning like we sell at grocery, we sell mm-hmm. at Ulta and beauty supply stores, specialty, Amazon, um, mass, Amazon, our own website. Every channel has a different, like for the most part, a mm-hmm. different bestseller. And okay. so, you know, talking about our SKU assortment and how extensive mm-hmm. it is, um, we we are just very diversified in our um, retailers too. And so, each of those retailers um, has a, something that their customers are really passionate about. And so, it makes us a really diverse brand. That's funny. But so, what is it on yours? Our shampoo and conditioner. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna guess on Amazon, it's the heatless rollers because Amazon rollers. tells me that. They're like yeah. top seller. I <laughs> yeah. don't know. Heatless and heatless and shampoo mm-hmm. um, or hair care do really well on Amazon. Specialty stores do really well with our accessories. Mm-hmm. They're very giftable. Yeah. What um, about Ulta? Ulta pillowcases. Oh, interesting. Um, also, shampoo and conditioner, heatless. Mm-hmm. Okay. Our dermaplaner does yes. really well too. Wow. Amazon. Mm-hmm. Or, I'm sorry. It's a whole. Ulta. It's a whole bathroom Uni- like lifestyle universe, <laughs> universe <laughs> now. Um, I do have a question. How can you name check how many units of the heatless rollers you sold on Amazon last year? Oh my gosh. <laughs> or a ballpark unit number. You know that's. Let That's me see okay. here. We can get it from the Is PR. Is it millions? It's it's millions. It's, it's millions. millions. Yeah, I mean, we in got one a, year, we got a stat. We got a stat. I'm just just to give you a yeah. benchmark. We got a stat for our shampoo and conditioner bars that we sell one every five seconds on Amazon. Um, no, or just, on, in, just general? in general, wow. we get we sell wow. one <laughs> bar every five seconds, and the heatless curling curlers do more. Than the wow. wow. See, Jill, I guess you people ne- aren't as lazy as yeah, us. Yeah, you were never going to invest in those shampoo bars. And now look at well, you. Well, I already told the eggs Anne, on your face. I already told Anne <laughs> that if there was one brand I'd invest in, it is Kitsch. Yeah, you guys are on But now Fuego. I'm too late. I'm too late. I got to let you want an, Do you want an angel investor? We'll pay you. <laughs> we will pay you in hugs and kisses. In <laughs> consulting that you really don't need. Maybe this is the time to show her my idea. Oh, oh yeah. I, this is my favorite. Let's okay. Part. Partner together. Okay. Actually, I want to make this breaking beauty, and I'm putting this on the record now. So, but you you might be able to. See. Okay, so this is my favorite shower cup I've ever used. It's oh. so janky looking, guys. Okay, but what makes it, it looks like a black garbage bag? Yeah, mm-hmm. but what makes it different, and why I'm obsessed with it, is because inside it's lined with Terry. Oh, interesting. And all the other ones are freezing cold. Who are you're we knocking? Shower. Who are we knocking this off here? Sonia Kashik at one time. So Target. <laughs> oh, she's probably not even around anymore. No, they well they don't have the they don't have really the accessories at Target anymore. There uh, you go. Anyways, um this is my idea because mm-hmm. when you're in the shower and you have just the regular one on, it's just like and also the noise it makes. Like this is just a more this was probably twelve dollars at the time mm-hmm. and it's like luxury. And I got so many Breaking people Breaking Beauty by Kitsch. I'm not even kidding. Can I want to do this. It, How do we it do it? Like headphones? No, I'm yeah. joking. <laughs> we can have a headphone print on it. But guys, like I got so many people hooked on it and everyone is asking me, where do I get another one? That's really, I love this. You know, yes. I, I've, 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 let's we work surveyed, together. We surveyed we some take of a the very Terry small cloth. Cut. So that's really, that's interesting. <laughs> yeah. Um, that's interesting that you like the Terry cloth. Yes. We got mixed reviews on interesting. that. Interesting. Okay. That, uh, yeah, maybe if you have a different hair texture, they find it too. Yes. there's too much friction or something. Curly girls, I do, see. Yeah. So I we, see. We can't do a long loop, Terry. Right. Drives, okay. Drives, drives the so maybe. Crazy. So maybe. But, wait. But okay. yeah. But that's where the satin line ones come into play. Yes. yes. I mean, I think that there is a place. Mm-hmm. I think there's yeah. a place, I and mean, we could do our flexi one with Terry on the inside. Right. Right. Yeah. Okay. Unless you like the over the top. Well, it does. Yeah, no, I like I like it all. I just this one's so stretched out. It's like embarrassing that this I even just, showed it on this camera. Is the tip of the this iceberg. This one is like an old stretched out T-shirt that you I just can't throw goes, out. Though. You know, I I have an Abercrombie and Fitch sweater from the day that I met my husband. Oh. So I I definitely have those in my closet. Oh my so, gosh, yeah. amazing! So thank you for indulging me. I okay. will anytime. You uh, you can text me and okay. be like. 
here's my next. I like these slippers. Idea. Like, I don't care. <laughs> okay, so these this is our like we've been having fun with product development. What is something that you created that you can now admit was a total flop, whether mm. it ever hit the shelves or not? <sighs> okay, well, this there's a couple things. <laughs> I think there's a couple things. One, I really wanted to make a headband with a veil that mm. was oh. used for putting on clothes that so right. you didn't oh, yes. put your makeup on it. Yes. And um, at the time, I think my staff just thought I was bonkers Mm because it was like the veil then just like came around Mm -hmm. and hooked underneath your chin. And um, I I think that was just, they were like, where are you going Too much. Yeah. I thought that the top, I mean, I've had a a couple, like even our shampoo and conditioner when we first launched it, um, everybody was kind of like, what are you doing? Mm-hmm. Right. You know, um, nobody's, I, I, multiple people have said, nobody's ever going to buy this. Yeah. Um, so, <laughs> you know, that was, that was, it, it, it was, it felt like a flop in the first right. few years. Well, I was just curious because you ha- do have the, the dermaplaning razors, which I've used, mm-hmm. and a lot of my girlfriends use those as well. What other face care products do you have that maybe I'm not as familiar with? We have a V-line face roller. Wait, this oh, yeah. is one of the ones. This okay. is one of the ones where I was like, God, this product is so good. Yeah. Where is everybody? Like, right. do we not want snatched chins? Right. Like, right. what is going on? And um, it's like a face massager, and it comes up, and, you know, like, believe me, I'm not the... And again, this is where I come back to, like, I want Kitsch to be the favorite. There's right. V-line facial rollers right. out there. But like we put like a ice roller on the other side, so okay. it's like you ice roll with on your eye, and then you V line with your mm-hmm. neck. And this is like one of those lifting ones that kind of goes out like yeah. a wishbone. Yeah, like you. Yeah, with and the it rollers, really gets yeah. into like uh, into the jaw muscles. Mm-hmm. That one was one of those products where I was like, this one's gonna be like a hit, a total hit, and that was just kind of like, okay, yeah. sounds good. Thanks right. for you know making that. Yeah. Right. Um, that's another face, facial care. Oh, you know, one other thing that we did that um, that one was one of my favorite products was we made organic cotton rounds. Oh, oh I um, love those. They were so good, right? Yeah. Um, but, you know, people were like, I'm sticking with my cotton balls. Mm-hmm. Oh, so, yeah. Weird. So, yeah. Okay. Um, maybe we're a little early. But, yeah, I, but I also maybe. understand that there's like a, a certain level of trust with certain categories. Yeah, maybe for sure. We weren't ready to play in that area yet. Yeah. Exactly. I understand that you're launching a shower head filter we next. Are. We are. Tell us about that. I honestly want one. And um, there are some out there. So mm-hmm. how is yours different? And how did this come to be? Well, I live in Los Angeles, mm-hmm. number one. The water here is crazy. Um, and number one, I, I really, I don't know why I just said number one mm-hmm. twice. <laughs> Let me start over. Number yeah, two. Go ahead. Number, number two. Um, no, I, I, it's, it was one of those things, like, again, we're in the shower with the customer. Mm-hmm. She's, she's using us for shampoo, conditioner, shave, mm-hmm. body wash. That was another skincare thing that we right. have too. Um, and, you know, the shower head filters that are out there right now are crazy expensive. Yes, mm-hmm. that's They're true. They're really expensive. And, um, you know, I, I feel really lucky that when I first moved out here, I got to live in a lot of different apartments and mm-hmm. it doesn't really work for a lot of um, small bathrooms. Right. Um, you know, the shower ends up, you know, yes. hitting your forehead yeah. because the head is so long. And so what we aimed to do was something a little different. We wanted the actual filter to just be what we're selling. Okay. So you can use it with any shower head. Um, You can use it with the handheld shower head. You can use it, you know, in your regular, uh, you could use it in a rain shower or the shower head that comes out. Um, But it's the most incredible filtration system. Mm -hmm. Um, Right now we just have one type of filter it's our favorite thing to do to do like the little tests trip step test strips with it okay mm-hmm. and uh, and check and see how clean all of our water is and we have consumer testing happening right now and everyone's like oh my gosh I can't believe it my hair my skin everything is like so much better I'm drinking my shower water oh my gosh <laughs> um, I want yeah. this so bad because I I have rosacea and oh, it's, so it's I have often thought to myself that mm-hmm. Well, this is why I started using micellar water all the time to wash my face because mm-hmm. I found even just splashing water on my face would make it really, really yeah, red. Totally. And so I am curious, like, 
it because it didn't have to be a hot temperature. So I am curious about whether the filter would help like over time. Absolutely. You no. Know? Yeah, that that's mm-hmm. exactly this is exactly the type mm-hmm. of product mm-hmm. for you. And when you think yeah. about it, it's like we're in the shower if we're lucky for like fifteen minutes, twenty yeah. minutes, and you're just you know, even if you take a bath, you're like sitting in that for mm-hmm. a long period of time. Mm-hmm. Um, that's skincare. Yeah. That's hair care. For sure. Um, I mean, that's kind of the whole foundation of Kitsch is, you know, we're hair care from the second you wake up and Mm -hmm. use our spa headband to the hair accessory to the pillowcase you use. Like, we are taking care of your hair from the whole day. So this is the shower filter. I can't wait to try it. Will my husband have to install it for me or is this something I can can work out on my own? Yeah. We actually have been doing a lot of tests. Okay. and asking people if they can do it on their own. Is it easy? Is it hard? It's yeah. pretty easy. Okay, let's, yeah. let's paint a picture for people that are listening. So is it like one of those filters that you would put in like your furnace? Like that kind of, it's like a square thing. Like what does it look like? Yeah. So it, it actually, you take your shower head off of the, where the pipe that comes into your wall oh. and you're going to put it in between. Oh, oh okay. And it's so cute. Oh. We made it really cute. And, um, and here's the other part. So, um, And how we can hope to be your favorite is we've thought about all these different things. When you change the filter, you don't have to take the whole thing apart again. You just take the the head off of the filtration um, component and then you add in just the filter and you put it back on again. So Hmm. this is it's it's supposed to be user friendly. It's supposed to be like, you know. I, I don't need to call anybody to help me right, do this. Right. Um, and but yeah, it's really small. It's only about the size of like a large apple. Mm-hmm. And um, and then you just stick it in between, mm-hmm. you know, the pipe and, and your shower. OK. How often do you have to change it? Every three to six months. OK. And takes it like yeah. hard water. Is yeah. that that's the idea? It, it makes it clean enough for drinking. OK. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Wow. I, this is why the celebrities used to bathe in Evian water or right. wash their face with it oh, back God. in the day. Right. In the black cars magazine days. I have days. to say that I have used a hair fil- shower head filter from a brand that is a lot more expensive, and mm-hmm. it is transformative. It's pretty great. I will say I got quite lazy and did not replace the filter, but it was, like, super expensive. But I also had a friend who has really fine hair, and she said it's the one thing that made the biggest difference. The biggest huh. difference. In her hair. Interesting. Yeah. It's like, she's like, you could give me old Plex K-18 all day or Pantene in this filter, and, and I'm you're good. good. <laughs> well, yeah. you know what? I think Pantene makes a product, though. Yeah. Are there any brands out there you like admire from afar? You're like, oh, they're crushing it or Mm. anything? I mean, Jamie, I think she's doing something Mm -hmm. really interesting. Uh, Jamie Makeup. Um, You know, uh, Thrive Cosmetics. Mm -hmm. I I chat with uh, Carissa and, you know, one of the things that I say to her all the time, like every beauty brand Every hair care brand, every brand has a choice Mm -hmm. in, like, what their mission is. Like, the fact that you give back to so much. Like, that's your choice Mm -hmm. to give back. Like, that's pretty epic. So you've been in business for 14 years with Kitsch. How has it changed in terms of getting your word out there? Because I think there's been so much reliance on social media and Mm -hmm. influencers and big behemoth brands have shifted their marketing dollars so yeah. they're primarily spending with influencers um i think some people would still think of kitsch as an indie brand but i'm not sure you are anymore so what what has been your strategy and how has it changed and where are we at today what works in 2024 mm. is it still michaela or what <laughs> <laughs> that's a really good question i mean obviously Influencer is extremely important to our day to day. Um, we 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 run a lot of digital ads too, mm-hmm. but I think the bottom line is, and you both do mm-hmm. such a good job on this. If the product doesn't work, nobody's coming back. Mm-hmm. And so, for us, we have a really high net promoter score. It's like a survey that's done, you know, and like like very neutral audience. Um, and in the hair care industry, the average net promoter score is like a 40%. So 40% of people that purchase the product would actually right. come back and promote it again. Um, Kitsch has a 60, over 60% net promoter score. And I think that that is like the most important thing. And um, so having great product, number one, is what works. Mm-hmm. Um, because I've purchased so many incredible indie brands mm-hmm. that got me and... Um, 
But when I used it, mm-hmm. I was kind of like, okay, this pump is forty dollars. You yeah. know, and I'm putting it on my face mm-hmm. and right and. I, I but I don't go back and I don't reach for it right. and and I want to be the favorite. Mm-hmm. I want to be the one that's accessible and people don't have buyer's remorse. Yeah. And so number one, it needs to be effective product because then when you do the marketing, mm-hmm. then you then the customer comes back and they're excited to to mm-hmm. see you in their level of satisfaction. Mm-hmm. But we actually don't do a lot of influencer events. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't do a lot of self promotion of me. Mm-hmm. This is such a treat to be on here. Mm-hmm. Um, I spend a lot of my time behind the computer actually running the the day-to-day business. Um, But we really focus on talking about the products themselves to the customers. Mm -hmm. So one thing that was really helpful for us in 2023 is licensing deals. Right. And collabs. Collabs. Mm -hmm. Um, One of the benefits that we got from that was, hey, we like Barbie. Do you like Barbie? Mm-hmm. We both like Barbie. Let's have a party, <laughs> you know. And it was definitely helpful for us to connect with the uh, mm-hmm. customer that maybe hadn't heard of Kitsch before, right? Because we knew once we made that bond, mm-hmm. they'd be coming back for more because we put so much pride in the products that we make. So, well, our final question for you is: What is this Kitsch Beach House <laughs> that we have heard about, and is it available on Airbnb? <laughs> What's the story? <laughs> Yeah, so pre 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 pandemic, um, we 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 this was like in the like high influencer event mm-hmm. um, time. The tripping with blank. Yes, yeah, mm-hmm. absolutely. We were like, you know, we can't really, you know, be sending people to Abu Dhabi and yeah. doing all this stuff. Um, and so we had um, invested in a beach house out in Malibu. And we were like, we'll do all of our events out here. Mm-hmm. And um, and we did a couple out there. And then the pandemic happened. And we were like, all right, well, <laughs> that didn't work out as planned. And so, you know, we put that up on Airbnb. We got some great shots. And then since since then, we continue to use it for events. Yeah. And then we put it up on Airbnb when it's not in use. Yeah. And should you ever want to stay, it is amazing. Absolutely. <laughs> we would love that. Um, it reminds me when you were saying that. Of, remember when the Barbie movie came out and mm-hmm. they had a Barbie house that you right. could air, they were airbnb Yeah. We did um, our whole Barbie is, shoot there. Oh, okay, fun. Yeah. Is there any, like, kitsch paraphernalia mm-hmm. about or like what makes it kitschy yeah we we put ki- kitsch products in the bathroom okay so you get to take home your mm-hmm. solid sh- your favorite yes. solid shampoo and conditioner yeah. um and then you know if, if, if we've had some like models stay there and people from the music industry mm-hmm. and we put like little travel containers and they're uh, you know their opportunity to take kitsch home with them shower yeah. cap all these things. So. Yeah. yeah. Thank you so yeah. much, Cassandra. Thank this you. is so, so much nice. fun. This is fun. Yeah. Thank you. And you are like part of our daily lives and so nice to meet you. Yes. You know? Because we're yeah. touching kitsch products all the time. Honestly. Yeah. 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 Happy to be here for oh, you. Thank, well, you. thank you so you. much. Thank you.